Well, hello, good evening to you. Welcome. This is Ghana Tonight. We're live morning sub here at Tadesawe Kanda, also live on Twitter and on Facebook. I am out for the concert tonight. Lives lost and others missing in two separate boat accidents in the central region and the greater Accra region in the last 24 hours. We have the updates on these unfortunate situations while we seek answers about the safety of travel by water in Ghana. Stay with us. Also, conjectivities that's popularly known as Apollo is on the rise in parts of the country. Tonight, we seek education on what has now become a public health concern. Stay with us. We're getting to it. Also, Ghanaian youth are desperately seeking opportunities abroad and other parts of the world as are seeing the surge of young people living in the country in droves. Tonight, we ask whether indeed the grass is greener out there. Now, we have a question on Facebook on this one we understand a number of you responding that some people are even going to take bank loans to travel out of the country that's how serious the situation is we'll delve into it and find out the major issues as always let's get interactive the hashtag we're using is going on tonight on facebook and twitter let's get talking well let's settle for gonna briefs Parliament Select Committee on Environment has invited the District Chief Executive of Shama to explain the circumstances leading to an explosion at a quarry site in the area. The Minerals Commission and other regulatory authorities have uncovered explosives at another site, leaving residents in the area in fear. Generally, our findings is that um, Galamse is still pervasive even within the concession, official concessions, maybe we need to rethink the whole uh, mining laws and how we are doing mining. And uh, generally, we are not very happy with the compliance of environmental standards. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, said it is re-strategizing its monitoring system and tightening loopholes to prevent being shortchanged. The agency has thereby set up a three-member committee to enhance monitoring and enforcement regimes. The executive director, Dr. Henry Kukufu, who made this known, denied claims that the Western Regional EPA director was reassigned due to the Shama explosion. <music> The body of a 15-year-old has been recovered and sent to Adar District Morgue following the Adar Kenu accident. Three people remain missing while the rescue mission continues. One out of the missing four people who were involved in the boat incident, accident yesterday was found at the community called Bishop in the water region. So quickly, the chief fisherman had to organize his men to put the body. As at 1.19 p.m., uh, the body has been uh, brought to Adan, the shores of Adan. So the police officers, together with some other few community members, came to witness the dead body. And the police has to take the country and then deposit the body at the district hospital. The flag bearer of the NDC, John Mahama, is urging the Electoral Commission to reconsider its decision to conduct the limited voter registration exercise only at its district offices. The former president contends that the number of centers currently serving Ghanaians is making it difficult for many to have their names on the voters' roll. He spoke to journalists at the Ridge office of the EC in Accra after monitoring the exercise. I appeal once again to the Electoral Commission. Now that we've seen the challenges, it probably is not too late to open the centers at the electoral areas because it will be easier for people to travel. I mean, for instance, Iowasu West Wagon is here. The farthest polling station in Iowasu West Wagon is at Sato. And so there are people here from Sato who have had to travel all this way to come and register. 
They might not be able to register today. They might have to go back and come the following day. We know the conditions in Ghana today, the hardship. We know how transport fares have gone up. It's not easy on voters to be able to do that. The Ghana Water Company says it is not its responsibility to prevent flooding at its catchment area in Accra during its annual excess water spills from the Wager Dam. During 3FM's engagement with the residents, head of communications at Ghana Water, Stanley Marte, blamed residents and traditional authorities for encroaching the buffer zone of their story. The district assembly must answer why they will issue a building permit for the un unauthorized area. You wouldn't blame Ghana Water Company for that one. There are structures springing up in the uh, in waterway into the sea. So please demolish these structures before they turn into homes. Well, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, lives lost and others missing in two separate boat accidents in two regions. That's the central region and the greater Accra region. We have the update on these rather unfortunate incidents while we seek some answers about the issue of the safety of travels on our water bodies in this country. Uh, some issues really that's coming up um, for major major conversation because since the beginning of the year to date almost 26 lives have been lost as a result of these uh, boat accidents which we'll be getting into shortly but let's start off with the central region where the search is still ongoing in the Pra River for the 50 year old security officer who got drowned in uh, Chifo Prasso after the canoe he was traveling uh, in was also capsized unfortunately meanwhile the family of the victim who are from quail in the eastern region have also got in touch with the officials of the chief of Prasso district assembly and the traditional authorities after earlier on your news uh, got that report and, and in fact this is something that we're keeping an eye on uh, quite quite closely. Um, um, and, and these are the videos that you're seeing. Uh, with this rather unfortunate incident that happened um, in the central region. The Nadmo director for the central region is joining us on the telephone for a quick update on it. Mr. Richmond Adaimafo, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Adaimafo, for your time here on Ghana tonight. So uh, update us first of all uh, on the latest with your, your your search and rescue efforts on this latest boat accident. Uh, thank you. Uh, point of correction, I'm not the uh, reg uh, regional director, but I'm the district director of NADMO at Chufu Itimokwadi. Thank you. The capital is Chufu Prato. Thank you yeah, so much. The, the, the incident happened last Tuesday, that is on the 12th of this month around 4 p.m. whilst they were crossing from the other side of the river from the Galamse side. They were about uh, 15 in the boat. Then they were about to land at the other side of the river, that is the also. And the canoe collided with a stamp in the river, which causes the capsize and one person was missing. You know on Wednesdays they don't allow people to work in the river pra. So they waited till Thursday before the chiefs and people were able to pour libation. Then they slaughtered a sheep before the research team got into the river for their uh, rescue mission. But as of now that I'm speaking, they were not able to find the dead person. I see. You're saying 15, 15 people were on the boat that capsized? Yes, please. Yes, please. And how many have you been able to rescue? Uh, they were able to rescue uh, 15. It was only one person who got drowned. That is security, that the security man at one of the guarantee sites. So it's only one person that is missing us as now. So only one person? Yes, please. Yes, please. 
I see. But is this a uh, disaster-prone area? I mean, I'm talking about where this incident happened. Have you in the past recorded such incidents before? Yes, please. Yes, please. You know, sometimes, uh, normally, uh, people living around uh, the other side of the river, they normally cross from their villages or their grandson side to, to, to Chufupra. So that is a to buy their things. So normally, it happens. This is not the first time. It has happened some time ago. I see. So if this is not the first time a boat has capsized in this particular area, lives have been lost in the past. A life has been lost now, from what we understand. What has been done to ensure that this does not happen again? Because you're just telling me that this particular spot is known for it. It's a disaster-prone area. Boats have been capsizing there. So what have you done? Sometimes we've, I've been educating them that mostly when they are crossing to the other side of the river, they have to wear this uh, life jacket. But you know, because the work that they are doing, that is Galante, is illegal. And whenever they are going, they don't take this advice. Sometimes I have to go there personally, then maybe advise them that they should use life jackets. You know, sometimes because the canoe at that particular area is one. So whenever they close from work or whenever they are about going to work, they struggle before getting to the canoe to cross to the other side of the river. So that is uh, another cause. So we have been educating them that whenever they are crossing to the other side of the river, they have to put on life jackets. And maybe the number of people in the boat, they have to reduce the number of people in the boat as well. Uh, on, on the canoe, they have to reduce them as well. Okay, so you say these people are mostly Galamse operators? Yes, please. And people farm it over the, uh, the other side of the river. Well, people have their farm too on the other side of the river as well. Yes, I wanted to understand that because you say, well, when I ask you that, what you have done, you say these were Galamse operators, so they don't abide by your advice. But they are not the only ones who utilize the boats in this area. Yes. You say they are yes. traders, they are farmers as well. How yes. about yes. them? School, school children too as well. School children too, can you imagine? So yes. what, what, so what yes. have you done? I mean, apart from the, this, this you, you, you blaming Galamse operators. So apart from that, you know school children are using that place as well. So have you done anything more than what you have just said to ensure that traders, farmers, school children are also safe? That's what I was telling you, that normally you go there to check the number of people that got on board, uh, on board the canoe to allow them to ask them to maybe, you know, uh, these canoes, some of them can take up maybe 70 or 20, 20 people to so make sure that they will not uh, more than the number of people that's supposed to be on the canoe. So normally we do go there to check on them. But this thing happened around uh, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the exact of last Tuesday. So we're not going to go to look there and we have to do such education to the uh, there. Okay. Are life jackets available for these people in that area? No, please. No, please. You know, for, uh, uh, the canoes are owned by individuals. For individual individual families that go to the other side, but we are advising them. So, but how do you advise them to use a life jacket that's not available? How? You know, <laughs> it's not the duty of uh, me as being that boat director to provide them with life jacket because they do their own normal, uh, their own uh, business. You know, somebody going to farm, and that's not the only place that we need to cross the river path to farm or to this uh, than suicide. So we can't be at that particular area. You know, some people cross at Sifuai and other is in Puja and other area. Uh, I get your point. But you see, the yeah. absence of the life jacket makes your job as NADMO also cumbersome, is it not? So you, you make recommendations to the district assembly and so on. So you are telling me earlier that you advise them to use life jackets. But the life jackets are not available. So, instead of, so apart from you saying, oh, it's not your job to provide life jackets, so then what? You know, you know, even when you come to my office, at the district office, we only have about a two, two life jackets. Sometimes whenever they flood, we go, uh, uh, we go, uh, we go to the ground for rescue meetings. So uh, sometimes it's very difficult. It's very difficult. 
So anyway, so until then, the people, their lives are just in their own hands. They are, they are just exposed to these disasters. That's why I said you normally go there to give them education, to advise them. We check on the number of people that get okay. on the various canoes. Uh, well, anyway, th thank you. Um, I guess I, um, there are more questions. Maybe you probably may not be able to give us the appropriate answers. We'll get to the district assembly as well as, as, as we go on. But that's the uh, NADMO district, that's Chifu Prasso, district director of the National Disaster Management Organization, Richmond Adayemafo. Thank you for your time here on Ghana tonight. A rather unfortunate incident. I, I want to show you this. This is the the Google map location of this area where this boat incident happened, which is, um, as we speak now, there were 15 persons on this boat that capsized and um, only one person has not been accounted for. Uh, 14 have been rescued from what we understand. And this is the Google map location of the River Pra. There's actually 16 persons who were on, on the boat that capsized. And now 15 persons have been rescued, one yet to be accounted for. This is the Chifu Prof, the, the Pra River there. That's the, the, brown, the brown line you see there is the Pra River. It is a live Google map location. So that is the color of the Pra River. We, we talk about Galamse and then also issues related relate to that. So if you're talking about for instance, the president makes the point about winning the war against illegal mining. This is the a clear exhibition of the fact that something is happening contrary to what the president is saying. So that's the color of the River Pra, and that's the river that these people, unfortunately, had their boats capsized in. And one person not accounted for. But, well, Unfortunately, this is not the only boat disaster that we've had to deal with this week. In fact, the last 24 hours. The second one happened in the Greater Accra region, specifically Ada, uh, where the body of a 15-year-old has been recovered and sent to Ada District Morgue following the Ada canoe accident some just about 24 hours ago. Three people remain missing while the rescue mission continues. Take a look. The 15-year-old boy's body was found discovered at Vome in the Volta region and later taken to Azizanya and the Adar East District Morgue. Eyewitnesses say such incidents frequently occur at the estuary, leading to the majority of fatalities among fishermen. The Adar East NADMO director, Ebenezer Te Kisenati, says the rescue team is still on the Volta River in search of the three who have gone missing. He advised fishermen to adhere to the use of life jackets any time they onboard their canoes. Let's stay a bit further on this. Go on to the telephone lines now. Ebenezer Te Nate Nadmo coordinator um, in the Ada East area is joining us on the telephone. Uh, Mr. Nate, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Uh, first off, uh, if you could give us an update on, on this uh accident the search and rescue efforts and uh, beyond this one person the 15 year old who has been declared dead any updates yes um um the numbers to stand here uh this this morning we had a call that um, out of the seven people that were missing yesterday uh, one has been found dead and then uh, three other persons were saved alive. But you know, these people, the water took them to different locations. One was found around Ningo Pram And then the other two seemed and then landed in a community called Faveme in the water region. So as it's time now, we are still missing three people. And that's how it is. Search is ongoing. Tomorrow, the Navy, together with NATO officers, will still go out there looking for them. Uh, one thing is, community members, fishermen, are also doing their search. 
families of those who are missing are also traveling from Adan to different places, especially water region, to do their search over there. Perhaps they may find one or two of them who will still let you know. I see. Uh, so three people are still unaccounted for? Yes, sir. Okay. So this uh, Azizania place, it is noted for these boat accidents, is it not? Exactly. I think sometime in the first quarter of this year, there was another boat accident at Azizania, correct? That is it, sir. How many people died? Yes, um, that one, unfortunately, we're not able to account for the number of people that were involved in the, that accident because the information came later after two days. So we're not able to actually account for the number of people that were in the, in the boat. But I would say said that most of them have been found dead, but the number we didn't know. Some other few of them were also saved, including a guy that was so uh, they, they saw him at uh, uh, Benin. As for that person, was in a life jacket, so the life jacket was able to sustain him three days in the waters, and then he was saved at Benin. I see. So that's how it is. It has been happening. <laughs> So this Azizania place is noted for boat accidents. It's been happening. The number that we uh, reported when this first incident happened this year, the first quarter of the year, the first boat accident at Azizania, we had 12 people. That was all the report. 12 people died. Now we are talking about one person confirmed that three unaccounted for. So what has been done to ensure that these boat accidents at least reduce in this Azizania place where you are? Okay, uh, we as LADMO officers, we always engage, we always engage the fishermen and all people that have been using uh, boats to cross the river. That they should always be in a life jacket. And they also complain that access to life jacket has become uh, difficult for them. Now, we as smart boat officers, we show them where they can get the life jackets to buy. Though it is the duty of the assembly to purchase life jackets for them. But the assembly, as of now, is not able to do it. So what do we do? We rather advise them that, look, if you are able to buy it, it is your property. It is there in your room. As and when you want to travel on the waters, you can put it on. So we advise them, if they are waiting for government or the assembly, corporate bodies that will be able to help, and the help is not coming, they should take it upon themselves to buy their own life jackets. That's what we've been telling them. Number two, we usually engage them and warn them against the use of uh, the estuary. Usually the estuary is rough because two water bodies mix together, and the force over there is too strong for some boats to cross sometimes. So we told them that anytime you realize that the sea is rough or the estuary is rough, don't try crossing it for fishing. Don't try it. You have to wait. When the water level becomes down and the waves are cool, then you can travel to, to the sea to do your fishing business. So that's what we'll be doing then. But some of them reluctantly would have want to go because they are rather looking at what they will get at the end of the day. They are not looking at the danger that will cause their I, life. I, I see. So but reluctantly, some of them have been going. So it, it appears that this, the absence or the lack of life jackets cuts across most parts of the coastal areas in this country because there's been another boat accident in the central region. I'm sure you've heard of it, where another person has also been found dead as a result. They don't have life jackets. NADMO is advising them to use life jackets. In the same instance with you in the Greater Accra region, you are advising them to use life jackets that are not available. So what is the District Assembly telling you, NADMO, about the absence of life jackets? Because these people whom you are telling not to engage in economic activity, they might not listen to you because that's where they get their daily bread. 
Hello? Yeah. So I'm asking okay. what you are telling the district assembly to do about this yes. situation. Because the absence of life jackets is leading to deaths, as we're seeing now. Okay, now, what, what I can say is that uh, the district assembly is working hard to get uh, life jackets from organizations and corporate bodies to be able to share for uh, our fishermen. For instance, uh, I know of the assembly writing to Ghana Maritime Authority to supply them with life jackets. I also know about the assembly writing to Ghana, uh, now they wrote to VRA, that's a uh, Water River Authority, to provide them with life jackets. They also wrote to me, to my office, to NADMO headquarters, to provide the assembly with life jackets. At least I can witness three different letters written to three different places. I see. So after, course, after these letters, have the life jackets come? Well, the life jackets are not yet in, and I mean the owner lies on the assembly to do a follow-up for the life jackets. I uh, thank you, uh, Ebenezer Nate. Thank you for your time. Yeah, on going tonight. Ebenezer Nate is uh, the NADMO coordinator for Adan East, and the problem cuts across. Where, as a result of the unavailability of life jackets, at most of the coastal areas leading to these both accidents that's causing lives lost as we speak. And that particular Zizania place, we understand, is noted for that. At least the beginning of the year, close to 14 people so far have died as a result of both accidents in that area alone. But it's something that we're going to stay the steam on subsequently and get some answers. But coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, Ghanaian youth are desperately seeking opportunities abroad and others are already leaving the country in droves. Tonight we ask whether indeed the grass is greener out there. In fact, some of you who have been engaging with us on social media indicating that you know people who have taken bank loans to get out of this country. The, the queue you are seeing there are visa sections of a number of the embassies, young people. We're speaking to some young people who are outside of this country working. They left. They'll share their experiences with us. They are connecting with us tonight across the world. Together with you, stay with us. We'll be back shortly. We're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market we take equal quantities of flamingo paint and this ordinary paint we then dilute them with water and now let the test begin the gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint and the gentleman on my right will use the flamingo superior paint as you can clearly see flamingo has the obvious better hiding furthermore Flamingo has painted a much larger area. You know, one bucket of Flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market. Flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage. Flamingo paint, simply superior. When you have the extra bit of ambition in your heart, you also need extra bit of energy to come through. And for that, Rush Energy is the perfect boost to get over the line. Created in the USA and proudly made in Ghana. Thanks to the unique formula, you have the power of ginseng. The benefit of vitamins and all the energy of inositol, taurine and caffeine. Anytime you need to go beyond, Rush Energy will help you get there. Everybody knows Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear what others are saying about M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. Who will be careful M Punch Wana? 
Just an amy uncas, I'm a prod, unless a problem is womb. It's not my own way, dear mammy. Papa, patches and any other some kitua. I'm quite points, you know, shame me more than one baby be, and also a moment, do mammy do me fine, and then my own cram, you know, who for one I'm quite more. Eba, and everything yourself. Mamma, I know what you do, and that's why I won't mean auntie. And then you call end point, or mamma, and then the white dear, what's me a sorry, and auntie. That's end point for you. Of our brother, too. Hello, hey, what's your what? Okay, a free bra would be end point, what does it? I'm a quiet, you know. Joseph, my name, Quayer, and pass on my name, and the Magina Sabama. Now, let me be here for you. The hard in a Jarasa. You had everything. I have secret. M point is my secret. M point from your party clinic. I'm free. Who is the ultimate energy personality of the year at the seventh edition of your prestigious Ghana Energy Award? Under the theme Ghana's Energy Transition Framework, Sector Institutions has building block for the 2030 to 2040 target. You can nominate yourself or an institution for categories such as CEO of the Year. Energy Investment Impact Award, Energy Signature Award, Endorsement, Validation, Industry Partners, Media Partners, TV3, Ghana Energy Awards, Seven Years of Redefining Excellence. The battle is still on, bragging rights still very strong. Who carries the day this week for Group 8? Is it going to be Anyako SHS? We are the Hoholiers and we are not just here to cook. Wesley girls, we are not just brainy beauties, we are masters in the kitchen as well. Ola girls, we won't like to talk much, we like to show actions. Or Christian Methodist. We we'll let our fingers do the talking and your tasting will do the judging. I'm you know to say down to those seconds. <laughs> Yeah, can't you say, oh, because, oh, and then, then let's see, yeah. We are seeing that, we won't say, yeah, 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 yeah. 27, 26, 25, hey, 24, 23. All the action is right here on TV3, Sunday, 5 p.m. with me, Cookie T. It is Kitchen Wars Season 2. Oh. Kitchen Wars Season 2, Sundays at 5 p.m. on TV3. Don't miss it. Sponsored by Gino Tomato Mix. And Napa Foods. Say Napa. And here on Osoko. PGL. Get ready for another cultural explosion like never before. On 21st September, Africa will witness an ultimate celebration of African diversity and flavor at the 3FM Afro Connect event. This is the place to experience the magic of African arts and creativity. You also get to unite in a sizzling Jollof War competition, igniting a culinary showdown. Will Cote d'Ivoire hold the Jollof War title? So whether you're passionate about food, art games, or simply making new connections, 3FM Afro Connect event on the 21st of September is the place to be. Venue, Pam and Chroma Memorial Park. To sell, call 053-220-0927. 3FM Afro Connect, connecting Africa and beyond. Brought to you by 3FM 92.7. Your Urban Lifestyle Radio, sponsored by Tasty Tom, ECG Power App, Festival, Mega 6 Lotto, Acel Wash and Powder. This week on the Kids Arena, we will be talking about social skills with an expert. What makes you communicate with others? What makes you communicate with your friends? We'll be bringing you the word of the week, the trending kid of the week, and so many more. Everywhere I go, it's African music. Everywhere. It's always helpful to try to improve your social skills. Is it a river? Oh, yes. A special hello to Ghana. I am here for the 16th annual Hedges Award. Don't miss out on all the fun this Saturday morning at 10 a.m. on the Kids Arena, right here. On TV3. Kids Arena, this, this is us. La, 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 la. This is us in the Kids Arena. Kids Arena, show Saturdays at 10 a.m. on TV3. Don't miss it. Uh, welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. Now, Ghanaian youth are desperately seeking opportunities outside of this country and are already leaving this country in droves. At least we've observed that at the Kotoka International Airport and then also most of the embassies as well, uh, we, we're seeing a lot, in fact, long queues of young people um, 
there. So these are, this, this is a queue for, for, for visa. In fact, this is um, the, the U.S. What you saw earlier was one of these visa sections. And then this one is um, an, a program organized to have young people explore opportunities in the education sector in the United States. And you have, in fact, there were long winding queues of young people. That's what you see there who are all seeking opportunity to get out of this country desperately. And this is not typical to just this place. There's the one we're just showing you. Um, a number of you have sent us pictures of some of the, the visa sections of a number of the embassies in this country where this is a typical site. As early as 3 a.m., people, young people start queuing to go for their visa interviews in a bid to get out of this country. Let's, um, well, expand the tentacles of this conversation tonight beyond the borders of this country. Dixon Kojo Sapong is a Ghanaian social protection practitioner and data analyst. He's based in Germany. Um, he's joining us on Zoom. Also to you, uh, Gordon Carty. He's also going to be joining us shortly. He's a Ghanaian health worker based in the UK. Actually, he was a nurse in Ghana and then left. We've seen a number of thousands of, of nurses leaving the country as well. Let me start off with you, uh, Dixon. First off, would you say that the, the... Are you actually experiencing the green grass out there than, than what you had here at home? Uh, well, um, I think it it will depend on how one sees the grass as as green or otherwise. So, for instance, if if you have someone in Ghana who has been struggling over the past couple of years to even gain a decent employment or something that will put food on the table, having the privilege to be here to even do any media job will automatically trigger that conversation. But uh, for people who are adventurous, those who through education has been here, um, have been here, uh, could also have it on the other side. Um, technically, it will be green depending on what brought you here, what you're doing, and what your hand found to do. But it's never green entirely as it has been made to to look like i, I see uh, great let me, gordon to you as well in the in the uk this is a germany experience gordon to you how green is your grass there um obviously the the the, the pasture is greener in uk and most european and american countries than it is in most parts of africa um so yeah so basically that is how simple i can put it I see. Give me a bit more a detail, Gordon. Why, why do you say that, um, that, that, that the grass you're experiencing there is greener than, than you were here? Um, let, let's start off with Dixon uh, as well. Dixon, your experience on that? Um, I would say yes and no. Um, basically, um, the minimum wage in Germany is 12 euros per hour. And so let's do this simple calculation. So as I mean, you you work like 40 hours a week and you you earn like um, 12 euro per hour um technically you are most likely to have a little above 1400 to 1500. now you have a rent to pay and believe me um a rent a monthly rent in germany um will be almost like equivalent to a one year's rent in ghana so you need to weigh these options to understand the, the technical needs of the money that you get in Germany compared to what you get in Ghana. So you need to take out your rent. You need to take out your utility bills, um, insurance, everything. So at the end of the month, anyone who is earning like 1,400 is likely to have a net worth of roughly about 500 or 600. Now, this is what you're going to feed on. This is what you are going to send home as remits. So in a nutshell, you are likely to save like 200 per month. But our system in Ghana is such like that it is difficult to find a job, even if you are ready to. But here, yes, you could get a job.
but the job could not or cannot offer you that kind of greener experience that you want to, to get here. But the assumption is, yes, the systems are in place. You, you get what you want, but technically not as green as it, it could be. So compared to someone who came as a medical doctor, um, who probably may have earned like a little below 5,000 in Ghana, um, the person could be here and take more. But one all, um, another angle that we also need to consider is the fact that the, the depreciation of the CD, the exchange rate and all that. So once someone gets like 200 euros and it comes to Ghana and it's more or less like a fortune, someone's monthly salary in Ghana. And that has been the deception. So even if the person is getting something lower um, than expected, it is considered a norm. And that is why some people feel, oh, yes, even if I get like 100 euros and I send home, it is more, much better than I was in Ghana. So this is where the narrative is actually coming from. So the greener or otherwise of this whole debate is about the narrative, how it is being preached compared to the reality on the ground. Because usually some people come and at the end of the day, they realize that, well, I, I made a mistake. So if you, you, are, you are in Ghana working in the banking sector, for instance, and you are earning like about 5,000, 6,000, and life is really cool for you, no stress, nothing. And, and you come here and you are struggling to do the dirty jobs there to make a living and you think it's so green for you. Well, that could be another, another interesting debate though. But yeah, I yeah. don't really see it that way. Very interesting uh, there. So you're talking about a wage of 12 euros per hour. So uh, <laughs> the 200, 200 you were talking about is, is, is in euros. Okay, so if you are doing 12 euros an hour and you are uh, doing, say, eight hours, so that's about 96 euros a day. And then you are saying that in average of 1,500 euros, thereabout as well. But what are the specific jobs? Because I don't think it's a, it's a flat rate across all jobs, right? You get 12 euros an, an hour. What are the specific jobs we're talking about here? Interesting. So usually, um, Germany, for instance, uh, I think the the most common jobs that um, foreigners engage in are just the basically the the warehouse jobs, you know, production support jobs like the Amazon um, jobs and all that. There are some technical fields that would need expertise. So in Germany, they call it us building that they need to train you for almost like three years, some four years, some two years, depending on your speed and all that. So you can't, you cannot actually get a, a more decent job that will make you feel comfortable. And these are the jobs that one will never even dream of doing in Ghana, but a person will find that comfort in doing it when they are in Germany or any other country in the in the West. So yes, because it, it, it pays it pays well, and then maybe the systems and structures are are different, is it not? Um, in in Ghana, say if you're having someone working in a mortuary in Ghana, they, the systems and structures different from working in a mortuary there. In Germany, where you are, so that's why people will travel and go and work there as well. But let me to you, Gordon, in the UK. Now, what are the specifics? If you say that you are experiencing a green grass there, what's the, the specific detail of your experience as a health worker? Um, comparatively, if you look at the, the job availability, the structures, the leadership roles, you know, um, by the people here, um, you know, when you complete school, you get the job. You 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 are paid well. You know, the salary structure is 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 very. It makes sense. You 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 spend less apart from you know comparatively rent is you not know, quite more expensive here than it is in in Ghana. But you earn more and you 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 spend less on other things like food and you know clothing shelter and all that um like i said the shelter is more expensive but other things are, are cheaper so you spend less and then you make more and looking at the exchange rate which is most important that's the reason why most of us left our country 
you know, the exchange rate also makes things, you know, more interesting. It makes it, it makes it easier to live in in UK and you know want wanting to do something back home. The exchange rate helps a lot. Yeah. Um, for you as a trained um, health worker, I mean, you were a nurse working in Ghana and then you left to the UK. How rewarding has that been for you? Of course, of course, yes, yeah. Uh, the the system here, you you are paid every hour, so obviously it it, it pays more than it, it pays in in Ghana. Um, in in Europe, in most of the countries in Europe, in America, in other parts of the world, you are paid every hour and you are paid for overtime. In Ghana, it doesn't even matter when when you you decide to work for you know extra shifts, you are paid the same salary. But in UK, you decide to work more extra hours, you are paid more. Um, obviously, we pay more tax than we pay in Ghana, but uh, we still make more money than we, we I made in Ghana. For I worked in Ghana as a, as a registered nurse for um, almost four years. And I can say that I have saved more money in the UK in three months than I saved for four years in Ghana. And I can see, you know, I've, I've, I've made impact in my life uh, when I moved into UK, but in Ghana, I spent four years and I feel like sometimes I've wasted all my time in Ghana. Wow. Uh, you've saved more money in three months than you saved in four years while working in Ghana. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, let me go back to Germany, and this time to you, uh, Dixon. So, how are the systems and structures like in supporting, especially the unemployed youth in in that country? Talking about Germany. Okay, so yes, that is true, and that is the unemployment benefits um, that, for instance, in Germany um, has been instituted, and you contribute to it on a monthly basis. So it's it's more akin to the. The, the pronouncement that gov the government of Ghana made concerning uh, that same thing. I think that was also unemployment benefit, which I'm yet to see its, its realization. So uh, you need to work towards it, you contribute. And as the adage goes, there is no free lunch in America. You pay, you contribute to it. So when you are unemployed, that is when you can lay claim. Even that it takes time and the stress you need to go through, follow up um, documentations and all, all that. You know, Germany is, is quite bureaucratic and paperwork and all that. So it is not really as easy, even though yes, the systems will work to support you, but you must also pay, you need to contribute to it. It is never free and everything that you deserve, yes, you must also work towards it. So that is basically how the whole thing is. Gentlemen, thank you so much. And um, let me go to you, uh, Professor Enoch Enchi is also joining us on Zoom. He taught for a while in, in the U.S., is now also the dean at the Academic City University. He's a development and social policy analyst. Thank you so much for joining us here on uh, Ghana Tonight. So you've been doing quite some work into this. Um, tell me how serious this, this uh, migration of young people from Ghana is looking like as we speak. Thank you, Alfred, and uh, greetings to your viewers. Migration is a very big issue all over the world. And if you look at Europe and America, I'm talking about North America, we have a driving force. It's an aging, you know, society where the baby boomers, those who were born after the Second World War, are all retiring. And the baby boomers are about 45 to 60 million people. But the current workforce that is supposed to work to pay off the social security of the baby boomers is really about 35 million people. So the workforce now is not enough to take care of the older generation. And then universities in America and Europe are also looking for students. In fact, Ghanaian students are really smart. Wherever they find themselves, they excel. So they are looking for, because of the economic hardships here, people are looking for opportunities to go to Europe and America so that either they continue the education or they look for greener pastures. And we all know about what is happening. People passing through uh, Libya all the way to the island of Lampedusa to Italy so that they can find greener pastures. So we have failed 
to provide jobs for our youth. And I've said it on many platforms that if we don't find them something to live for, somebody one day will find them something to die for. They need jobs. There are no jobs here. And if they go outside and find jobs, of course, they will go. But if you go to the airport and see the number of people living, of course, it's a big brain drain. You train individuals. And then these smart human resources, you allow them to go to Europe and then build Europe and America. I think that in a way, some of us have come back to build. And some of my colleagues call it national service because there are many cultural shocks that you see here when you come back. A lot of frustrations. But yep. all in all, we can turn this brain drain into brain gain. I see. And I think that's but what some, the some, some, have described, some have described uh, presenting the situation of these young people living in droves as a national security threat. This is something that you agree with? It's a security threat because when your workforce is leaving, uh, it means that the people you work with, and, and unfortunately, the governments think that, well, we still have a lot of people who can work with, but we are talking about trained skills. So these are all trained people. If you want to go to America or Europe, they look at a lot of things. They look at your bank account. They look at your educational background and see whether it will be of benefit to them. So, yes, it's a security threat because your human capital is being taken away by another country. And they're going to use your human capital to build this. That That's a problem. But, but do you see the, any urgency to deal with this on the part of government, to deal with this, this migration, the young people living in droves, as we're seeing? Hello, Prof. Unfortunately, we lost Professor Enoch Enchi there. But a number of you have been sharing your experiences and your opinion about this, this subject with us. On, on Facebook, we put a question and take a look at some of the comments, whether or not you will be better off out there than here. Dalbert Kisi says, most definitely, their system is largely based on merit as compared to us. Plus, the devaluation of our currency would make a foreign currency have a higher rate of exchange, consequently increasing my worth in Ghana. Bismarck, the standard of living is too high here in Ghana. The abuse of labor is outrageous. One works long periods of hours and receives peanuts. Expenses is always beyond revenue. We live and keep smiling just by the grace of God. You say Bismarck Boating, um, uh, Bwiri Kwame, Martinson. Every six months, security forces are passing out with no advertisement for enlistment. I go to work, seven to four. The 10 hours of work, tires, working tirelessly, but earn a beak of a bird salary. If I am to say, say same, 10 hours abroad uh, with the right mindset, within two years, or two to three years, you say, I'll be better. You say, Florence or Krampa, I'm happy here and will make it here in Ghana. That's Florence. Um, Gumala says, when those of you planning to leave succeed, the few of us left here will bounce back and make the country better. The larger numbers is not helping because majority are planning to leave. They don't put the country first in whatever they do, you say. Uh, quite a number of them. Um, it says convert your, Ghana, your salary from Ghana cities to dollars, euros, pounds, and you will realize in Ghana we are only waiting for judgment day. Um, anyway, Boachi Hygienic sends us this one. Anyway, thank you. Um, Justice Paintel says, ever since I had my degree as a Ghanaian, I never thought of anything in this country that's working. Even me, myself, I'm not working. <laughs> anyway, thank you. you know, we have so many of your uh, uh, comments, but thank you so much for sharing the comments with us. Um, there's an outbreak of, of Apollo. And so we want you to just take a look at what you need to look out for and then also what you have to do as well um, in, in treating it, you know. So take a look at this. First off, using seawater to treat Apollo, the, the, some of the harmful practices, um, instilling human breast milk in the eye, instilling urine in the eye, all of these, uh, applying herbal preparation in the eye, seeking eye care from unqualified eye care practitioners, self-medication, using eye drops pre prescribed for someone 
all of that. This is a, coming from the Ghana Medical Association. Um, so there's information that is coming out. But essentially, you should look out for these and, and not engage in such practices of putting breast milk in the eye because you have Apollo. No, go to the right ophthalmologist to get help. There's more of this on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. On behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. Join me tomorrow morning for Key Point at 7 a.m. here on TV3, also live on 3FM 92.7. And my guest you see there, Al Hassan Sweeney, Dr. Jonas Aikwapon, Martin Pibu, Professor Ransfor Jampo, and then also Richard Ahiaba of the MPP. They're going to be joining me tomorrow morning on the key issues that have dotted discussions throughout the week. Together with you, we'll have a key moment tomorrow morning. Thank you for staying with us here on Ghana Tonight. Have a great weekend. I am Alfred Akansi. Ghana Tonight is brought to you by Flamingo Paint, superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage, simply superior.